Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And today we're not talking about Venom or Carnage, actually. Uh, we're going to be talking about this series here called Silver Surfer Black. This is the second printing or third printing maybe of, uh, yeah, third printing of issue one. This book sold out really quickly. Uh, a lot of people, I didn't even know about it at all. I didn't know it was coming out. It's written by Donnie Cates, art by Trad Moore. And I'm a big Trad Moore fan. I really like his style. And he lends himself really, really well to something like Silver Surfer and like cosmic stuff. He's got a really cool style. Um, so the book, again, Donnie Cates always teaming up with phenomenal. Like I, it's, almost, it's almost ridiculous how lucky this guy gets with artists because his artists, every single one he teams up with is just absolutely amazing and and perfect for the stories they're telling and i feel that way here with trad more uh, but this book sold out completely and by the time i heard about it i think it was issue two was coming out or three it was about to come out and people were like dude null is in silver surfer black you got to talk about it on the show and i said wow okay like this is kind of our our real look at null because we got glimpses of them in the first six issues of venom by donny cates and ryan stegman but um we don't really have a full grasp of him. And apparently this story takes place in the past before he's sealed up inside Clintar. Uh, so that I also thought was pretty cool. And I'm like, oh, great. So we're going to see like this godlike creature fight Silver Surfer um, in the past. And I go, I wonder how they're going to pull that off. So I figured, all right, let's, I couldn't find a single issue, like the first issue. I couldn't find it because it was sold out at that time. So I bought the digital copy. I think it was only 99 cents. And I read it and I was like, oh, this is pretty good. I'll, I'll, I'll see you know, next time I go to the store, I'll see if they have like a, a third or fourth printing or something. And luckily when I went to the store, issue two had just come out and they did have this third printing of number one. So I picked them both up and I've been continuing them ever since. So as we talk about this throughout this episode, I will have digital codes go up. Um, there's only four though. Uh, unfortunately, one of the codes ripped and I was unable, like the paper stuck together and I was unable to kind of like, like it happens every now and again. I talked about it in the last episode, but sometimes Marvel, like when, you know, when they, release these sometimes the stickers for the digital codes they don't come off so easily and it's a bummer it's a bummer um so i will you know i missed one of the issues so one of the issues won't pop up but i think i have like one three four and five or something like that so silver surfer black is basically a storyline that picks up right after i think a guardians of the galaxy story or something that donny case was telling where there was silver surfer beta ray bill who i'm a huge fan of uh, from the thor comics and a bunch of other heroes and they were getting sucked into this like rip in time and space and silver surfer makes a big sacrifice play to make sure the heroes you know get sent somewhere else safe and not go where he's going and so he makes this big play and and you know and, and sacrifices his own self and it uses his energy and everything like that and gets sucked into the past and meanwhile the other characters they go off and i think their story continues in like a guardians of the galaxy annual or something like that i think cosmic ghost riders there and stuff of course because it's donny cates he does that with all of his own characters all the time so in this one he had silver surfer gets sucked into basically way back to the beginning of time where he gets to meet like ego the living planet when ego is still an infant and uh that was a kind of a cool twist uh, he also gets to meet galactus when galactus is just galan he's just the the traveler before he becomes galactus and uh, so that was pretty neat to kind of see that again i think donny cates is really great with ideas and he's and he's really he has very interesting concepts and i think that's what his strength is in my opinion but the dialogue still in this book is just some of the worst like it just i can't get around his dialogue sometimes it's so bad uh, and in this one no exception um and maybe that's because silver surfer is just this character that Maybe I hold too high on a pedestal. I'm a big Fantastic Four fan. I love the original Silver Surfer stuff and all the original run, the Thanos stuff. Um, obviously Parable, which I think is what Donny Cates was doing here. He wanted to write almost like a, a nod or a love letter in a way to Stan Lee and Mobius's Parable, which is one of the, it's such a great, con it's like two issues um, and it's beautiful. It's just a really great Silver Surfer story. There's even like a quote uh, from it in here uh, in the back on the last page they do this really great little tribute to Stan at, at the end which I thought was very classy very awesome uh, where um, you know this this character looks at Silver Surfer and says look don't go Galactus is too powerful men worship him no one will help you you'll be alone you'll be destroyed and Silver Surfer says if we turn from battle because there is little hope of victory where then would valor be let it uh, let it be ever be the goal that stirs us, not the odds. And that's Silver Surfer in a nutshell. This guy is, he's balance 
in a lot of ways, and he's he's uh, the voice of reason at times. He's wise beyond his years, um, but he's also foolish in his youth because he signs up for Galactus's, you know, becomes a herald of Galactus. Um, and I love that. I love that he's this 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 person, this being who royally screwed up in a lot of ways and atones for it constantly um, and works hard to balance the wrong he's done. And so I like that, again, Donnie Cates makes balance kind of the theme in this. So again, from a concept standpoint, great. Uh, clearly understands the character, at least as far as I understand the character. Uh, but just these little beats of dialogue are terrible, in my opinion. Like, uh, you know, Silver Surfer's narrating, and a lot of the stuff he says is just pointless. A thousand percent pointless. This is one of those books where you read it, and I just go, God, I... And again, maybe because I look at it as a writer, too, and as an editor, but I'm like, take some of this... Di like, you don't get paid by the word. So take some of this dialogue out. Let the art breathe. Let the art tell the story. And because Trad Moore is really great at his art and his style, and there is, there's some really great moments in here where it's very clear what Silver Surfer is doing, and then there's just like this dumb dialogue posted above it, you know, or, or not even dialogue, it's like inner monologue, and I'm just like, we don't need any of this. Stop trying to be, you know, like, uh, I, I don't know, I, I guess some writers think like, oh, by having someone internally monologue something, it, it adds, you know, uh, something to them, or maybe it, he thinks that's where the wisdom from Silver Surfer comes from. And I'm like, yeah, sometimes Silver Surfer's wisdom comes from his actions. Yeah, he has great dialogue in that scene from Stan Lee where he talks to the girl, and he was like, hey, look, this is, you know, this. Th where would Valor be? He has like a poignant thing to say. He's one of those guys that when he speaks... It, it matters. So like, so I guess it makes sense in his head. He rambles, but I, I don't like the ramble. It doesn't fit the character, or at least the character as I like to see him as. And, uh, and it just comes across as like uh, someone who's just like, oh yeah, like look at, look, look, look how weighty and awesome this is. And look how, you know, the world rests on this guy's shoulders and I got to say it. And I got, you know, and it just comes across like that. And that's where I'm like, I wish Donnie Cates sometimes would get out of his own way and just let things breathe, you know, um, because a lot of this, I, I would probably cut 50% of the inner monologue from every issue of this book. That's how much there is. I'm just like, there's, there's too much. You don't need this much. Um, because the concept alone is great. Silver Surfer goes back in time and he comes across Null. And this is before Null has, uh, you know, been caged by, uh, Clintar. And, uh, and he's got, you know, these heralds himself. He's, he's his own God. He locks himself in this dark doorway and he has these guardians protecting it silver surfer shows up um, he's infected as you can see his hand is turning black that's kind of what's going on he has given into some kind of darkness it's, it's overtaking his body and as he gets further and further and uses his powers more and more and as time passes he starts to get more and more infected and he's no longer silver and he's losing his light and uh, and that's the thing he kind of um is talking about in this book. And like I said, some of the monologue you need because it sets up that, that balance, you know, like, okay, I, I, you know, I need to, I need to give into the darkness in order to fight the darkness. And, and he's trying to come up with all these things, but he's, he's being foolish. And I, I like that because he finds wisdom in places where someone like Silver Surfer would find wisdom. He goes and talks to Ego, the living planet, as it's still an infant, and they work out some things and they talk things out. And I'm like, this is, very well done. Like the actual dialogue between those two was really well done. The inner monologue, like I said, I would cut a lot of it, um, but everything Silver Surfer for the most part says to Ego and, and back and forth is actually really good. And it helps further the plot and it helps you understand the motivations of these characters. So it's, it's you know, like anything with Donny Cates for me, it's hit and miss. But uh, with the dialogue, at least whenever uh, he does talk, there is something to be said. And I like that because I'm like, no, oh, that reminds me of parable and it reminds me of other uh, silver surfer storylines um and then of course silver surfer as he's being more and more infected he comes across uh things from his past like this uh chamber here which crash landed into ego the infant ego and it has galan inside and galan will one day become galactus so uh you know so as silver surfer is trying to uh you know fight back against null he realizes null is very powerful he was able to take down null's minions but null himself is chasing after Silver Surfer. So Silver Surfer is blazing through space. 
it comes across ego. They try to do something ego, you know, to fight back. Ego's like, I don't know if you can fight him on your own, but I can help you. But I'm wounded. So Silver Surfer's like, let me see what the wound is. He finds out it's that chamber where Galan is. He goes inside the chamber and actually talks to Galactus. And he says, look, I'm here to kill you. And Galactus, who is not Galactus yet, he's Galan. He says, you know, let me tell you from personal experience, um, whatever I'm going to do one day, whatever you're here to kill me for, I'm not going to stop you. But let me just impart a piece of wisdom as someone who's just recently gone through this. You do not fight darkness with more darkness. That is not how you win. Um, he goes, that's not how the battle between light and darkness is won. He goes, so if you need to kill me, <clears throat> do so. But I'm telling you, this is not the way to go about getting what you want. And Silver Surfer ultimately sees the wisdom in that and chooses not to kill Galactus when he has a chance to. And then wa the Watcher shows up and uh, the Watcher talks to Silver Surfer and that's really great. And, you know, the Watcher's like, you know, you should you should heed his words. You should listen to Galan and uh, and talk to him. I'm going a little bit out of order here. I think he talks to Watcher first, then Galan. Uh, but he's like, yeah, you should, you know, heed those words and uh, and understand. He's like, I'm, I'm here. I'm not here to stop you. I can't intervene. Um, but I, I am here to watch and make sure you don't do the wrong thing, because uh, if you kill Galactus before he becomes Galactus, the stuff you'll change, trust me. And he goes, and the blood will still be on your hands. And no matter what this darkness that's taken over you, it's still going to keep going. He goes, so, you know, in my humble opinion, as a watcher, maybe you should um, try to find another way and do the right thing here. And that's what I liked because the Silver Surfer, he's not an all knowing being. But sometimes he is wise beyond his years. But here he's in a panic. He's dying. He's in a position where he, he can make real change. And he gets kind of seduced by that in a way. And that's kind of like as the darkness grows, he sees all these opportunities to do, you know, to change the world and change the universe and, and undo everything that he knows is going to happen and maybe save his home planet Zen Law and everything. And he sees a real opportunity to make that change. And it, it, and it kind of corrupts him a little bit. And so he has to constantly battle that in this book. So like I said, from a concept standpoint, Donnie Cates kills it in this one. Uh, the, the inner monologues, I feel like I would cut about 50% of them. And that's my only real critique, a negative critique on this book. Because overall, I thought it worked. Um, I thought uh, the character of Silver Surfer, for the most part, was very true to the character. Um, I liked the adventure he goes on. I liked the lessons he learns. Um, and I certainly like the ending. The, the Pretty much the last issue is Silver Surfer versus Null. And it's them two going at it pretty well. And so like, it looks like um, the first defeat that Null ever experienced is from Silver Surfer. Uh, but even then, Silver Surfer doesn't completely destroy him or kill him, obviously. Uh, he has a different fate. He's eventually going to be locked under as a cage uh, in Clintar. Uh, but he, you know, they do reference that Silver Surfer, his impact on the universe, too, and like what, what he's, you know, become over the years. And so at the end, when he's almost fully engulfed in darkness, he uses the last bit of his light to land on this one planet, plant some seeds, and turns out that that planet one day will become his home planet, Zenla. And so he kind of, in a way, gives birth to the planet that will one day birth him. Um, it's this neat little cycle uh, of storytelling. And uh, and I and there's the biggest message is forgiveness, is how he's trying to forgive himself. And that all these opportunities to kill, to kill Galactus, to kill Null, all these things were really just him, in a way, looking for inner peace and not so much external peace uh, in his last moments. So it's it's a kind of a story about him dying and being reborn. And where we go from here, I don't know, because I don't want to like show the last panel, but it's pretty neat. And I'm, I'm kind of curious to see where they go with this. And hopefully maybe Donnie Cates and Trad Moore have another story in mind, or maybe we'll see Silver Surfer pop up in another book. Um, I don't know, but I, I thought it was pretty well done for the most part. I mean, like I said, the inner monologue parts, I would cut a lot of it. There was a lot of times where it felt like Silver Surfer was kind of patting himself on the back for, for being so awesome. Like, oh, I'm, I'm this and I'm that. And, and I just felt like that's uh, Donny Cage just, you know, I don't know, uh, putting the wrong, maybe putting the wrong spin on, uh, on what he should be feeling in those moments. Or maybe that's part of the corruption part or something. I don't know. But uh, there was parts of it where I just like, I'm not feeling this inner monologue stuff. But I thought some of the dialogue, surprisingly, between like him and Ego and him and Watcher and him and Galan were actually pretty good. Uh, Null's dialogue was probably the worst. Um, Null in this, like I said, we actually get a, a sense of Null, what kind of being he is, what kind of ruler he would try to be. So this, if you want to know more about Null, I would say this is a good book to pick up. Because even though he's not in every single issue, he's in, uh, I think he might be a little bit in each issue, actually. Um, 
but in the later issues when he like gets you know shown more um he really just has just generic dialogue like i'm gonna destroy you i am a god i am the you know the darkness and i, I should rule everything it's like every line of his is just like a bad cliche line it doesn't add anything really to the story it doesn't help you understand him as a character he's so generic um i found him to be the worst part of this book which that makes sense to me because when he was in donny cates's venom book i also found him to be terrible i'm like well everything he says is cliche he looks like a, a terrible you know like a, a castlevania knockoff vampire design um there's nothing i didn't find anything interesting about him um and same here i feel like noel is the weakest part of this book uh, but he is in it enough to where those of you out there who are fans of noel if you aren't reading this i would say pick it up because Null is in it and uh, and you get to see him actually fight and you kind of see what his goals are a little bit and then kind of what his purpose is and and how he reacts to a being like Silver Surfer and hopefully this is a setup to when Null does come back maybe we'll get to see Silver Surfer pop up in that storyline which will be pretty neat because as we know from past episodes we talked about Silver Surfer does have a connection to the Clintar race uh originally like they kind of I don't know if Donny Cates is retconning it here or if he's just adding something but he was saying like in this one uh he says oh the Clintars have an issue with me and now I know why it's because in the past I weakened their god and it's like well no that's not why the Clintar race had an issue with you before uh the Clintar race in the Silver Surfer Carnage crossover in Spider-Man Amazing Spider-Man um that storyline we talked about and it had carnage he had the the genetic memories of past you know clintars because obviously they passed their memories on to their offspring and stuff so carnage was able to remember a time where there was a planet that the clintar race took over and galactus showed up and ate that planet and silver surfer gave that planet to galactus to eat because when he saw the clintar race he was just like oh this isn't even the original race of this planet they conquered it so yeah they're just parasites let's just let Galactus eat them. Um, so that's why the Clintar race is scared of Silver Surfer, not because he fought Null. So again, it's just Donny Cates do like, oh, my characters are more important than what was there before. I'm gonna add my own stuff and whatever. It's like, well, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't offend me or bother me that much, but it's just, it's kind of standard for how he writes things. So, um, but I gotta say, Null, like I said, he just, bad writing bad lines of dialogue for him uh i don't feel like he's an interesting character at all he's very one-dimensional just very one-track mind and that can be done really well um sometimes if you have someone with a one-track mind you can you can do interesting things with that sometimes but i don't so far i haven't seen that from null so uh maybe donnie will dive into that more whenever null actually gets reborn because i'm sure that's the big story he's building towards is Null coming back in present day and maybe Silver Surfer and Venom and all these characters are going to fight him and stuff. So we'll get, we'll cross that bridge, I guess, at some point when we get there. But for this storyline, my favorite part, obviously, was Silver Surfer, which is good because it's a Silver Surfer book. And I love the artwork. Again, Donny Cates teaming up with a phenomenal artist. So if you haven't read Silver Surfer Black, I recommend it uh, if you're a Silver Surfer fan. If you want to know more about Null, you do get a little bit more. But like I said, I didn't find it very interesting. But you might. So, you know, don't take my word for it. That's just my opinion. Um, and if you have different opinions, about this book than me please let me know down below i'd love to hear your thoughts and hopefully you guys pick it up i think the trade paperback might be coming out soon so if you want to wait for that i think uh it'll be out very very soon if i'm not mistaken issue five just came out so probably in like another month or so maybe december uh the trade paperback or the hardcover whatever format they release it in but uh, i would say pick it up it's good and if you're looking for good silver surface stuff pick up parable um that's a really great storyline and uh and i can't recommend that enough so um again let me know your thoughts down below thank you guys for being so patient on these videos uh you know i didn't realize i was gonna have so much to say about this one but it was it was kind of fun i mean overall i i would rank this higher like i savage avengers um, I was like, oh, that's okay. That's cool. You know, as far as that stuff go, like as far as those characters go, but like the Venom stuff wasn't very strong. Same with this one, like the Silver Surfer stuff was strong, but the Null stuff wasn't. So I found myself with, that's why I wanted to do these two back to back because I had such very similar feelings about them. The thing that ties it to this show, which is Null and Venom were the two weakest points of each of these stories, uh, at least in my opinion. Again, you might have a different opinion, so if so, let me know down below. But that's why I want to talk about them. But the next one, the next episode we're going to talk about is a Marvel Actions Venom, like Spider-Man book. And that one I had a lot more fun with. I, I got to be honest with you. And uh, and there's some cool things that they do in it with Eddie Brock that I think are more reminiscent of the movie version of Eddie, which is also kind of cool. So we'll get into that in the next episode. I'm sure I'll have more fun talking about that issue. Uh, but this one, pick it up if you're a Silver Surfer fan or if you just want to have 
every appearance of Null. Make sure you also pick this up um, because uh, I'm sure the threads in this storyline are going to pay off at some point down the line when Null returns. So uh, definitely pick it up because it'll probably be a precursor to all that. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, let me know your thoughts down below, as always, and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.